Okay, so now I've got the shuttle basically drawn up. I have all of the the shape of the craft itself done here. I guess I gotta add a few tidbits to it. I gotta add gear. Um, I have to adjust <clears throat> the angles of some of these engines yet. But generally, um, I'm about to move on to the. Uh, I'll be building the the drop tank in this this episode here. Decided to split this build up into a few different videos just to make it a little more digestible because it takes me a, it takes me a couple hours to put together a craft like this. So if I want to put the whole thing on the internet, I really have to break it up. <laughs> it's a bit long. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just finish this stuff in here that I didn't do yet that I need to. Perfect. So the point of having this docking port here is that um, I can use the control from here function on it to change my prograde. So because this engine is kind of offset from the rest of the craft, just by virtue of have there not being enough room for all the bells down there, um, I have to angle it, this engine, towards the center of thrust. So the way I actually do this is I have to first disable these engines down to zero. Then I have my center of thrust should be centered right over. That's like crooked. That doesn't seem right. Did I not get them all the way to zero? Thrust limiter is zero. Hmm. That seems offset. Oh, I know. because these guys are up here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to flip this engine so that the arrow is pointing the opposite direction because now the arrow will go directly through the center of mass marker. Um, let's see, so the center of mass moves back to about here, so I need to aim the arrow roughly there. So I'm going to rotate the docking port. Man, that's pretty steep. That should be about good, but that is that is really, really steep. Um, I feel like I'm going to end up moving this engine. So if it's got to be tilted that far, then it needs to be not attached way, way up there. We'll see what it looks like from here. Then it'll be closer as the center of mass moves. Um, it will move from here to here, which are both still very close to that axis. So that's good. Move my mouse way out here, get better, better control, better fine tuning here. That works, cool, okay. <clears throat> So now I can flip that engine back. Like so. 
And now that engine is lined up perfectly to drive the craft once I'm in orbit. So I'll be using the drop tank with the main engines until I'm circularized around Kerbin. Uh, I set my parking orbit at about 250 kilometers, and that's uh, until I get to that point, I'm going to be on the main engines. But after that, I drop off and we use just the cheetah. So the main engines will actually be also angled, but these ones will be done a little bit differently because the, um, the main engines also have to keep the craft stable and add thrust to the SRB during ascent. Ah, but how to attach this? We'll bury you a little bit, I guess. Then I need some fuel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be sending it up on a thoroughbred, which is 2.5 meters. So I guess I'll start with an orange. Uh. Now I'm hungry. separate oh yeah I got to enable crossfeed here too okay uh, why are you being oh I know I don't need any of the arrow uh, overlays at the moment because I have to turn that fucking engines on. Okay, 27. So 30. Wait, what did it say before? 2652. No, this needs to be a separate stage. That's what's screwing this up. So I need to have about, I want to have close to 2,000 Delta V in the tank. I want this to be comfortably rangy. What's my thrust to weight ratio right now? 1.5 full? Uh, I'll get 1,500 out of it. That'll be okay. I'll already be hauling by the time I get to the top of this uh, this thoroughbred but I do want to I do want to be going a decent speed when I get there it's not just about Delta V <clears throat> having too low of a thrust to weight ratio can also mess you up Should auto strut this too before I forget. Always auto strut. Always auto strut all your stuff. Yeah, that works. Very important. Keeps your craft from cracking itself apart. You can regular strut it too, but. Auto strut is something that you have to unlock in um, campaign mode, so I don't feel the least bit bad about using it. That fits nicely. I like that.
this is becoming a respectable craft after all. All right. Um, I can add a little bit more to this. So 1136, I want to have 1500 ish on here. So we'll add another half an orange. 1542. That'll work. Cool. And this is a decently powerful piece on its own. 244 extra on top of 1440. Thrust away ratio is 1.95. So I also need to stick an orange underneath this cone. Twelve seventy, fifteen seven, fifteen thirty-five. I really need like three thousand. Well, actually, this is vacuum sea level. Eleven fifty plus fifteen, so twenty-five hundred. I really need five hundred more delta V to be comfy in getting in orbit. One point seven one. That's still kind of low. I don't really want to move this SRB even farther back. <clears throat> hmm. Thirty one hundred up here. I really don't have a ton of extra. F I don't have extra fuel on the orbiter. The orbiter has the fuel that it needs. I can. I'll probably add a couple of little tanks or something inside this fairing where there's extra free space but like there's maybe not because I have that lapping pretty hard so I should leave some open there just for fairness hmm one point seven one I guess we'll see how it does with another half One point six two. I guess that's acceptable. Wait, eleven, fifteen, thirty-five. That didn't increase it. What the hell? No. I wonder. Okay, am I too? Am I? I got too much fuel in there. I do. Oh, no. No, I'm reading this wrong. It just moves the... Okay. No, I'm just, I'm just reading this wrong. I... So then I do need... That really doesn't... I must be close to the max. Um, this you can see if I add more fuel, there's a bit of a tipping point where you have like the ideal amount of fuel, and then the carrying the extra starts to hurt you, um, or carrying it in the wrong place starts to hurt you. I really want to launch this on a single engine, though. I wish I had the Clydesdale. Hmm. Can I do this? Is this going to work? Twelve seventy. I mean, that is really, really close. Fifteen 
18, 40, that's 1150 plus 1550, 2700 delta V, that's not orbit, 2700 is not enough to get me into orbit, I wonder if I can add a little bit more fuel to the top of this without hurting anything's feelings. 17, 12, 12, yeah. Maybe I just test fly it like this and see. I'll see what I get. Because that's still a decent starting thrust to weight ratio, but I don't want to waste fuel on this thing. I'll make you the, I'll make you the bricks. <clears throat> 56. I guess that should be enough to get to Minmus and back. Like Minmus takes a lot less Delta V to get down to, but it takes a lot more to get up to. Oh. That's not what I wanted. So now I've got my tanks roughly set up. Now I'm gonna rotate my um, my main engines to face this. Because right now, the center of mass is really far off. <laughs> um, I'm trying a new thing here with these tanks and I'm not sure if it's gonna pan out or not. But I guess we'll see. Where is my center of mass at the end of this engine? Pretty close, I guess. Uh, I like to have them facing mostly straight for this part because um, it's important to have enough counter force against the rotation. This is gonna start to push the craft nose up when it gets to towards the end of its burn. I mean, you can see the center of mass is already pretty far off the axis of this engine, and this engine is enormous. Um, it quite, produces quite a bit more power than all of this combined. Uh, let me see how this looks actually with both engines. Mm, not great. I'll rotate those up just a teeny bit. And we'll see what we get out of that, I guess. This may be a disaster, but it'll be a it'll be a fun one. Okay. Now I need to add enough arrow to this Thing to keep it straight <clears throat> that is easier said than done
that should help. Oh, I know. Time to do some tuning now that I've got everything installed. hold you up. Make sure you don't fall. Actually, that'll look just fine right there. So those are all in the first stage with the main engines, then we split, then we split, then we switch. So those can be one. Save that. Yeah, those don't need to be up there. Now we gotta set our action groups. You will be... Oop, nope, 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 not those. Toggle engine. Two will be U engines. Zero. Will be toggle direction and toggle play. Actually, play sequence. Oh, solar. That's the other thing that I'm missing. Electrical. We need some little solar panels. And I need them to be, like, mounted inside this um, payload fairing here. Because on I was looking into the arrow and just kind of generally paying attention to my craft because it's a thing that I do. Every once in a while, I'll just launch one with all the debugging running, just to see how the game processes everything. And I noticed that these guys seem to produce kind of a lot of drag, depending on how they're mounted and where. And so I'm going to try to avoid that by having them... Hopefully, if they're this much inside a payload fairing... Oh, yeah, i got to make sure... I wonder if it'll let me... Um, extend the solar panel if it'll think it's stowed. Mm -hmm. I got those engines good, those engines are good. I set all my arrow here. Roll, yeah, 10. Needs, we got solar, we got battery, got my command and control. Oh, all my electronics. Communications. I do not have an antenna. Don't need a fancy antenna on this guy. I uh, and automation. Do I really need? Yes. There's no excuse not to have a little pod core in here. So I'm going to have a little pod core in here. Alright. Oh no! My payload fairing! <laughs> I can't sacrifice that. Uh, I gotta do this the other direction.
All right. Well, when we come back in a minute here, I'll launch this beast and we can crash it. Woo!